Welcome to English Practice Stories. Hello, my dear friends, how are you? Did anyone ever mention the phrase, misery loves company, to you in conversation? Well, that was the truth between my boyfriend and me. Let's start the story. My boyfriend, Connor, and I met at our local park about five years ago. We both had been going through dark times in our lives and had conveniently sat on the benches adjacent to each other near the giant oak tree in the middle of the park. I remember the sad look in his eyes as I approached him. His beautiful emerald eyes met my own. I remember his silky brown hair matching the same color and texture as mine, even our highlights matched in color. I sat next to him and started a bit of small talk, mostly about local politics. Our soft conversation quickly became heated and full of laughter, it turns out we shared a lot in common. I was an avid kayaker who traveled to different spots around the country, and it turns out so was he. I had a beautiful silver GMC Hummer to drag my kayak trailer around. He ended up walking me back to my car in the nearby parking lot, and I noticed he had the same style of car as mine. I didn't see any problems when we found his car parked next to mine, in fact, I was overjoyed. Over the next five years, we grew closer and closer, sharing exact interests. We moved into a small townhouse together about two years in, went shopping, decorated it to look like a fishing cabin, and adopted two beautiful German shepherds. We were overjoyed to see our little home coming together. Connor brought up the idea of marriage on our five-year anniversary. I wasn't thrilled about the idea, seeing as wedding planning would affect my progress toward getting my PhD in marine biology. He seemed happy with my response, as he was studying for his master's in psychology and wanted to take his time. I don't know why, but his response caught my attention. Something felt eerie about it, but nothing I could pinpoint. Over the next few days, I noticed more and more about Connor that perplexed me. His body shape matched mine, minus the womanly features, of course. His waistline was thin, with small muscle lines extending from his navel to his upper chest, and his pelvic bones were slightly pointed out from his skin. His arms lacked muscle, and his hands were bony. I looked the same, mostly due to an eating disorder I was working my way out of. His feet were abnormally big for a normal human size, and his nails grew long and oddly sharp quicker than I've ever seen, which, apart from his slightly taller stature, was the only difference we had. His hair, cheeks, eyes, and nose matched my own. I chalked this up to genetics being genetics in the past, but now that I had a second look, everything seemed off. I brought this up with my sister over the phone and requested that she talk to my mother. My mother and father are both scientists at a place called Vermilion Laboratories and have been there since they were fresh out of university. I could sense a sudden hesitance in her voice at my request. Uh, Celia, you should go see mom in person. She said, a small quake in her voice. Why? She cut me off. Just do it, it's for your own good. I sighed. All right. I grabbed my keys and pudged towards the front door. Hey honey. I heard from the living room. Connor peeked his head out from the side wall. Where are you going? My sister told me to go see my mom about something. Why? I lifted my keys to set them into the lock, 
only for Connor to grab me by the wrist. I turned back, a wild look in his eyes greeting mine. Don't go. He jolted, trying to snatch the keys from me. I wrestled my arm back from him. His nails dented into my skin, tearing away flesh as he stumbled back. I quivered in shock. Three long open wounds had been torn into my arm, pouring blood into the cracks of the wood floor. Connor backed off in shock, his wild look shifting into panic. Without a second thought, I slammed my keys into the lock. I blacked out, the last thing I saw was Connor lunging at me and the door flying open as I made my escape. My consciousness came back in my car at Vermilion Labs. I looked at my arm, the wounds were long and deep. I took a pocket knife and cut my shirt to use as a dressing for my wounds, then quickly made my way inside, only to turn back and see Connor leaping out of his car at the end of the lot. I ran as fast as I could, Connor was right on my tail. Celia. His roar made my hair stand on edge. What the hell did I fall in love with? Who the hell is this man? Endless questions filled my mind as I ran down the seemingly endless halls. I made my way to the basement of the lab, hopping over the ledge that kept visitors from entering. I hit the first stair only to feel my ankle give away. I braced myself, each stair impact leaving bruises on my body. Connor's voice was far away enough to lend me a bit of relief. The basement was pitch black, and small flashing red buttons from the side walls punctured the darkness. I felt around, sliding my hands along the walls, coming to a switch at the edge of the room. I turned, only to see a red button turn its trajectory towards me. I felt a shiver go down my spine. The red flashing lights were not buttons. They were eyes. I flicked on the lights to see Connor, not just one, but tons. All adorned in white jumpsuits, with different numbers on each one. I froze in place. A pair of hands grabbed my shoulders, and a light breath was against my ear. I was made for you, Celia. Don't you see? I hope your days will be spent with your precious people. What are your thoughts about this? Post a comment about your opinion in the comments section. Thank you for listening to the story. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon to meet us again and hear more stories like this. Bye for now. If you like our story, Subscribe English Practice Stories channel and click the bell icon.